South Carolina women's basketball signee Joyce Edwards is going to change the entire complexion of the Gamecocks front court. You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome back to the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I am Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast, and also a staff writer for Gamecock Digest over on Fan Nation. Thank y'all so much for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your first listen or watch for your team here today. We are free and available both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's episode is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high-stakes wager for your small business. And that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team, both faster and for free. So post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. Hope you're all having a great Monday and start to this week. We got a lot to discuss on this Monday edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast, and it's all going to be basketball related, particularly on the recruiting front. We'll talk about one men's basketball prospect, the Lamont Paris and the Gamecocks could be back in in the game for due to some external circumstances. We'll also talk about three women's basketball prospects to watch from the 2025 class as far as Don Staley and the women's basketball team is concerned. But I want to start off today's show by talking about the crown jewel of South Carolina's 2024 women's basketball class, and that is undoubtedly Joyce Edwards. Joyce Edwards played in the Nike Hoop Summit this past weekend in Portland, Oregon, where Team USA took on Team World, and it was a pretty doggone good game. Team USA ended up winning 83-80. to They had to come from behind to win the contest. I believe at one point, they were down by as much as 17 points, and they went almost an entire three quarters without having been in the lead but Joyce Edwards led the team with 25 points and Kennedy Smith who's a Southern Cal commit also pitched in a great deal as well and those two kind of spearheaded the charge back to the win for the United States now the reason I want to talk about Joyce Edwards is because when watching this game I really feel confident in saying Joyce Edwards is going to be South Carolina's most skilled front court player since Asia Wilson. Now, I understand that making a statement like that, it might sound like a dig at Aaliyah Boston. I promise you it's not. Aaliyah Boston is one of the greatest players that has ever played basketball here at South Carolina. And clearly, her impact on the university, her impact on the program as a women's college basketball player in general It is hard to measure, okay? So I want to get that out of the way before I get into why I think Joyce Edwards is going to change this front court. Because when we we think about South Carolina's front court, obviously there's definitely skill that is there. Asia Wilson, probably the best example out of all the front court players that South Carolina's had in the past decade or so. But usually we talk about girls that are really good athletes. Obviously, they've got the physical intangibles that a lot of the teams just don't have. And we also talk about the depth of South Carolina's front court a lot. And when you have all of those components in your favor in 99% of your matchups, then you're going to win the battle in the paint. You're going to win the battle in the front court. But Joyce Edwards is going to make the front court for South Carolina even more dynamic once she gets to campus and becomes fully a part of this team because she has got some abilities that we have not really seen since Asia Wilson was suiting up for the guard in black. You go back and watch this Nike Hoop Summit game. You can go and find it on YouTube, the entire game if you want to watch it all. Joyce Edwards, she has got real solid ball handling ability and ball control for a player that plays at the four spot. She's listed at six foot two, and sometimes she kind of comes off as someone that could be playing the wing spot, but she plays again at the four. But she has guard like handling when it comes to, you know, maneuvering with the basketball. 
She also understands how to create separation between herself and her defender. She knows how to use a jab step when she's in a stationary spot to create separation for a baseline jumper. She also can use a crossover move to blow past a defender. She can pull off reverse layups. She already has a hook shot. And she also knows how to move from both sides, both her left and her right, in order to get closer to the basket. And this Nike Hoop Summit game, in my opinion, was a really good test for Joyce Edwards because the world team had some pretty tall front court players, not Camila Cardoso tall, but players that, you know, were six foot three, six foot four consistently that Joyce Edwards was going up against. And if there's one thing that might hurt her a little bit, at least at the start of her college career, it will be the fact that she is six foot two. And again, for playing the four spot against especially some of the better teams in women's college basketball, there's going to be times where that is going to hurt you. So, how do you work around that for someone like an Aaliyah Boston, who was South Carolina's starting five and listed six foot four? Whenever she ran into those situations, she just utilized her footwork, something that she worked on heavily, obviously, after her sophomore season, and she was a completely different player in her junior campaign. Joyce Edwards has already learned how to use her footwork and, again, her ball handling and her ball control. And also her body dexterity. Point being, Joyce Edwards is not going to be somebody that you're going to see land on the floor constantly. She is usually in full control whenever she's got the ball in her hands on the offensive end. And that is something that for South Carolina, when you combine that with skill, you combine that with the high-low actions that they like to play with, and obviously how often they like to get their front court players involved in their offense. And that's not even getting into how much Joyce Edwards likes to run the floor in transition. Joyce Edwards is going to be a difference maker for this team. I am not going to be that person, and I'm not going to sit here and say, I think Joyce Edwards is going to start her true freshman year. I don't think that's going to happen. Again, Dawn Stanley and the Gamecocks, as y'all have definitely pointed out the last week, they have a system. And there's a reason why they've been so successful, because they have stuck with that system. So I think that it's fair to say Joyce Edwards is absolutely going to be a part of the rotation next year. And it's going to be great because let's just say for the sake of argument, Ashley Watkins starts at the four next year, right? Ashton Watkins, obviously, her strengths lie on the defensive end. Uber athletic, can make up ground very quickly, can obviously grab a ton of rebounds, is scrappy. So that's where she makes her living. Joyce Edwards, while I would say she's also a solid defender in her own right, when she gets on the floor, she's going to make a difference on the offensive end. So Ashton Watkins will come off the floor and the opposing players will sit there and go, okay, finally, we don't have to worry about her now when we're on offense. But now you got to worry about Joyce Edwards going out there and matching you basically bucket for bucket. So, again, highly recommend you go back and watch that Nike Hoop Summit game. It was incredible what Joyce Edwards did. And I think that Gamecock fans have great reason to be excited about what she is going to do. Not just because she's a five-star or the number three player in the country or the fact that she's a South Carolina native. Obviously, those are all reasons to be excited about her joining this program. But I think that the biggest reason why you should be excited is because she is going to expand the overall skill set of this front court to a great deal. So it's going to be fun watching Joyce Edwards go out there and play with Malaysia Fulwiley, with a Tessa Johnson, with a Raven Johnson, Ashton Watkins, Sanaya Fagan. It, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Trust me, things are not slowing down for the Gamecocks from a talent perspective in their front court. And when it comes to the 2025 class, South Carolina is already in the game for some of the biggest heavy hitters in that recruiting cycle as well. So who are a couple of players to watch over the coming months as we gear up for this next basketball season? We'll talk about those players in a couple moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. 
Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. And that's why you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs today. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team, both faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. They help you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else. Even those who aren't actively searching for a new job, but might be open for the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours when they use LinkedIn jobs. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash college. That's linkedin.com slash college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. Welcome back to this Monday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. We cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day. And as always, a big thank you to each and every one of you everydayers who make the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecock sports coverage and thank you so much for our last show on Reagan Beers and her potential impact on South Carolina's women's basketball team that show has now garnered over 18,000 views by far the best show that we have ever done here on the Locked on Gamecocks podcast so thank you thank you thank you whether you watch the show on YouTube or you listen to us wherever you get your audio podcast daily we greatly appreciate all the support that you give us Okay, let's talk about women's basketball recruiting now for South Carolina. As the 2023-24 season has concluded, we all know who's going to be a part of the program this next season for the Gamecocks. But obviously, fans always have a curious eye towards the future. And so, I did a little bit of research and found a website that went over a few prospects that South Carolina is currently in the game for. Unfortunately, it's kind of hard to find concrete info on women's basketball recruiting, but did manage to get a couple prospects from a website out there that I'll be sure to reference at the end. So, in terms of the three players that you need to watch for the 2025 cycle, let's start off with six foot one wing Dariana Alexander or D Alexander out of the state of Ohio. D is rated the number six prospect in the 2025 class by ESP and Hoop Girls rankings. The South Carolina Gamecocks are currently in her top 15 alongside other teams like UConn, LSU, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Southern Cal, Tennessee, and Texas. So, a lot of big time programs going after D. Alexander. Now, while watching some of her highlights on YouTube, what I picked up from D. Alexander's game is that this is definitely an athlete on the floor. D. Alexander is someone that can make a difference on the defensive end with her lower body explosiveness, and also when she is slashing to the rim on the offensive end. She can finish through contact at the rim offensively, which is obviously something that Don Staley and her staff values a great deal because of the amount of opportunities you're going to have in that regard in their offense. She also can be a facilitator, and it never hurts to have you know, one point guard on your offense and also cover the players that, you know, can orchestrate and move pieces around and also find the open player that can maybe set up for a high percentage look. And D. Alexander likes to run the floor in transition. And so again, this newfound attacking style of South Carolina's on the offensive end, look, Raven Johnson might be gone by the time, say, D. Alexander comes to the Gamecocks, but they're still going to have Mylesia Full Wiley, and they're not going to slow down in terms of how quickly they run the floor in that regard. So that is definitely something that is going to help, I think, if you like to run the floor in transition. I think that's going to make it an even more intriguing option for Don Staley and her staff. So D. Alexander is the first prospect to keep an eye on. Another player to keep an eye on is five foot nine guard Aliyah Chavez out of the state of Texas. Now, Chavez is rated by ESP and Hoop Girls as the number one recruit in the entire class. And 
her top 10 definitely serves as evidence of that notoriety, as South Carolina is obviously in there, along with the UCLA, LSU, Ohio State, Southern Cal, Tennessee, and Texas, along with others. Chavez is is somebody that definitely likes to take her three-point shots. She has a deadly pull-up jumper. She can be dribbling one second, the next second, the ball is gone and traveling to the rim. So you can never be lax when you're an on-ball defender on Chavez when she is at the three-point line. But she's not just a shooter. She also is a pretty solid floor general. She's got solid court vision. She likes to drive to the basket and try to dish off last second. She also is flashy enough where she can fake a pass in the paint area and take it herself. Kind of like Malaysia Full Wiley. Maybe not to the extent of Malaysia Full Wiley, but it's still pretty impressive nonetheless. She has proven in what I have watched that she can score at all three levels. And so, Aliyah Chavez is definitely someone that's offensively oriented. She is somebody that is going to help you in terms of perimeter shooting, but again, she can attack you in multiple different ways, putting the ball on the floor, driving mid-range, taking an elbow jumper, or again, taking it to the rim, using her crafty ball handling ability to create a shot for herself, or to get her teammate an open look at the same time. So, Chavez, definitely an offensive star out of the state of Texas. I have to imagine that the Longhorns are going to be a big contender there, considering that that is her current state of residence. And the last player I want to discuss real quick is six foot one wing Jasmine Jazzy Davidson out of the state of Oregon. Now, Jasmine is rated the number three prospect in the 2025 class by ESP and Hoop Girl. So all three of these prospects, top six players, according to the current rankings. For Jasmine Davidson, her top eight currently consists of South Carolina, UCLA, LSU, Southern Cal, Stanford, Texas, and others. So you can see there a little bit more of West Coast flavor, which makes sense because she's from the state of Oregon. I believe that Stanford was sort of the first big name program to extend an offer to her. So I would say that they're probably the biggest player here in this recruiting battle. Jasmine Davidson from the little bit I was able to watch. She is definitely someone that likes to drive to the basket. She has a solid turnaround mid-range jumper. She also can help protect the paint against smaller wing players when she is on defense. She does possess some pretty sweet moves, including an up and over move, which can, again, help her get past the defender and get an open look at the basket. And she also can drive to the basket with either hand. She is predominantly left-handed from what I was able to tell, but she can also drive with her right hand as well, which only makes her more dangerous on the offensive end. So, again, Jasmine and Aliyah Chavez, both of those players, primarily offensive players. I would say that D. Alexander, she could definitely be an offensive playmaker for you, but also because of the athletic traits that she possesses, she can help you out on both ends of the floor. She can be more of a two-way wing for you if that's what you're looking for in that regard. Now, want to give proper credit to the website that I got this information from. So before we move on, quick shout out to womensbasketballblog.com. If you're interested in checking out more information, be sure to go to wbbblog.com. A lot of good stuff over there. And yeah, again, when you look at these prospects, it goes to show Dodd's the only Gamecocks. It makes sense when you are the top program in the sport, no matter how talented your roster is on paper, you always continue to go after the top players in these classes. And that is what they're doing once again in 2025. So keep an eye out on D. Alexander, Aliyah Chavez, and also Jasmine Davidson. Now, Don Staley and the women's basketball program, they might not be the only basketball program that makes noise fairly soon. Lamont Paris and the men's basketball program, they might be getting a rare second chance at one of their top targets in the 2024 recruiting cycle. I'll explain that situation in a few moments right here on Locked on Gamecocks. 
Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. NBA playoffs are getting underway later this week. The Denver Nuggets are the number two seed in the Western Conference. The Nuggets obviously won the NBA championship this past season, so you would probably expect that they would have the best odds to win it all. But you might be a bit surprised if you believe that notion because FanDuel currently has the Boston Celtics listed with the best odds to win it all. The Celtics' odds are currently listed at plus 165. The Nuggets are currently listed at plus 300 to win the NBA championship. So, if you still believe the Nuggets and Nikola Jokic are the top dogs in the NBA, you could get some pretty easy money by putting something on on the Denver Nuggets prop bet to win the NBA championship. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Welcome back to today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast where we cover your team every single day in just 30 minutes. The door might be cracked open once again on a top 40 prospect for Lamont Paris and South Carolina's men's basketball program. This past weekend, the 35th best prospect in the country, according to On3's industry rankings, Cam Scott, out of Lexington, South Carolina, officially was released from his national letter of intent by the Texas Longhorns, which effectively means that his recruitment is once again open. Now, Cam Scott was one of the biggest targets for Lamont Paris and his staff in this past recruiting cycle for obvious reasons. South Carolina's men's basketball program, if there is one historical black guy that this program has had, it has been their inability to keep the best prospects in the state of South Carolina home. And obviously, when you have a lot of good programs surrounding your state, programs like the Duke Blue Devils, the North Carolina Tar Heels, you look at the Tennessee Volunteers, and also the Florida Gators to a certain extent, it's always been difficult, just sheerly because of geography. But South Carolina has also proven in recent years that, look, you can come to South Carolina and you can be successful. You look at players like Sandarius Thornwell and P.J. Dozier. Both have played professionally for the last several years and both wound up going to the Final Four together on the same team in 2017. You look at Gigi Jackson. Sure, it might have not gone the way he wanted it or maybe Lamont Paris or fans wanted it this past season, but look at what he's doing right now in the NBA. He just scored 44 points in the Grizzlies' final game of the regular season and if he had played more games, he could have been in the running for NBA Rookie of the Year. He's gotten off to a fantastic start. And I'm not going to take away any credit from him or maybe his trainers at the next level. But you do have to give at least a little bit of credit to what Lamont Paris did with him while he was in Columbia. Colin Murray Boyles comes to South Carolina, played at AC floor, then went out to a school all the way in Colorado for a year or two, comes back to his home state. He was one of the best freshmen in the SEC this past season and looks primed to be a first-round pick this next year. Not to mention, South Carolina made the NCAA tournament for the first time in seven years this past month. So, Lamont Paris obviously has got a lot of things going his way. Texas, look, I'm not going to say that they're in a bad spot right now. I know yesterday they just landed a plethora of of transfer portal players, I believe a couple of them at the guard and wing spot, which now might uh, tell us part of the reason why Camp Scott got his release from his national letter of intent. But you have to imagine that Camp Scott has at least been keeping up with what South Carolina has been doing. And you already know that people have been in his ear saying, hey, you see what they're doing over there? They're literally about a 20, 35 minute drive away. Um, why not stay home and help them continue to do what they're doing? So, in terms of the million-dollar question, 
Does South Carolina have a real shot to get Cam Scott? I would say right now the answer is emphatically yes. I mean, who else could be in the running for him? Now, it should be mentioned, South Carolina, it wasn't like this recruiting battle just came down to South Carolina, Texas. Technically, there were other teams involved when Cam Scott committed to the Longhorns this past fall. The other teams that were listed in his final six were Alabama, Auburn, Oregon, and Ole Miss. So, very interesting to see that, again, he is getting his release from Texas. That could be due to a plethora of things. Maybe, again, he's just impressed by what's happened here. Maybe Cam has just taken more time and he's realized maybe he wouldn't like to be that far away from home. And if that's the case, you'd have to assume that Oregon's out of the mix. And then you look at Alabama and Auburn. Two very successful seasons by those programs. Alabama went all the way to the Final Four. Auburn had a disastrous first-round loss to Yale. Um, but I would say South Carolina, listen, they've got a lot going their way. Cam Scott took four visits to South Carolina before he wound up committing to Texas. The Gamecocks are obviously in a state of transition right now on the roster. They've got a lot of new players or younger players that are going to be stepping up into bigger roles next year. And so if there's any year where a player like Cam Scott would want to come join the program, this is the best time to do it. South Carolina, you look at what Cam Scott could be playing. He could play the shooting guard position. He'd be probably a bit of a combo guard in that regard, but he also might play the wing spot. He's six foot five. So I would say he could play maybe a little bit of both. And South Carolina, at shooting guard right now, there's no obvious answer. They're trying to, I think, mine the transfer portal at the moment to get somebody. But if you get a Cam Scott, you might not have to go get a portal prospect there. At the wing spot, you've got Zachary Davis coming back. He's going to be a junior this next season. And Miles Studi, some big news that came out on Monday morning. He has signed an NIL deal with the university's trust, the with the university's NIL collective, the Garnet Trust. So Miles Studi is also coming back for another year here in Columbia. So the wing spot, admittedly, might be a little bit tough to get some minutes there. But again, it's right there next to home. And Lamont Paris now has plenty to point to as far as his pitch is concerned for why you should consider coming here. I get it. We're not a perennial winner. But look at what we did last year with a team that I kind of threw together. Not to take anything away from Talon Cooper, Michi Johnson, Miles Studio who joined last year, and BJ Mack. But again, it is really difficult to do what Lamont Paris did last year. Get all those guys from all these different schools and get them to play together as one team and buy into what he was doing was extremely impressive. If South Carolina had won the regular season title, or at least a share of it, it probably would have gone down in SEC history as one of the greatest turnarounds the conference had ever seen in any sport. So, needless to say, I don't imagine Camp Scott's going to take too long on this because, I mean, he's only got a couple months left before he's going to be expected to enroll in his new school and get into the off-season training program with his new college teammates. I have to imagine that this is going to end with Cam Scott being a Gamecock. And if that happens, we'll talk a lot more about the skill set he would offer, but it would be a huge deal if they could land Cam Scott. So keep an eye out on the Lexington native over the next few weeks. With that being said, that's going to do it for today's edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. I hope y'all thoroughly enjoyed today's show. As always, what are y'all's thoughts on Joyce Edwards and how she could help the front court for South Carolina evolve to an even greater extent? What are your thoughts on the 2025 recruits and or targets to watch for South Carolina? And lastly, what are your thoughts on Cam Scott getting his release from his national urban tent from Texas and whether or not Lamont Paris and the Gamecocks could land him at the end of the day. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or you can shoot me a direct message on X at a lion underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. As always, thank you all so much for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Monday and a fantastic start to the work week. And I'll be sure to catch you all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast. <laughs>